My name is Sun Hyuk Kim, and I'm the Vice President for International Affairs and a Professor of Public Administration here at Korea University. I will, I will be your Master of Ceremonies for today's uh, morning session and, and uh, President's Roundtable, as well as the wrap-up session in the late ap afternoon. First of all, I'd like to extend my warmest welcome uh, to our guests today, special guests today, particularly uh, to our guests from Europe, China, Japan. Thank you very much for coming all the way to uh, participate in the conference. Before we begin, I'd like to make a few logistic suggestions. Uh, please turn off your cell phones or turn it, uh, uh, put it in vibration mode for the duration of the program. And as well, uh, please refrain from taking uh, digital photographs. If for any reason you need to excuse yourself uh, during the uh, course of this morning's ceremonies, you may depart from the doors in the rear of the conference hall. I'd like to explain the, this morning's agenda now. Uh, this morning's agenda will include welcome remarks uh, from Professor Jae Ho Young, President of Korea University, followed by congratulatory remarks uh, on the inception of the consortium uh, by Deputy Prime Minister and uh, Minister of Education of the Republic of Korea, uh, Dr. Chun Sik Lee. This will be followed by a keynote speech by uh, Professor Yuka Kola, Rector of the University of Helsinki in Finland. And following the opening ceremonies, uh, the President's roundtable discussions will be introduced, uh, uh, both by a presentation uh, to provide background context for the discussions, as well as by President Yam. And President Yam will also act as facilitator of the President's roundtable discussions. And uh, all of this will end approximately at 11.30 a.m. And after the President's Roundtable discussion, we will uh, adjourn for lunch. Uh, before I call uh, President Yam to the stage, I'd like to provide you with some of his biographical highlights. Uh, President Yam is a faculty of the Department of Public Administration at Korea University. He has held a variety of university leadership roles prior to becoming president last year, most recently having served as executive vice president for administration and external affairs. In addition to his administrative experiences, uh, Professor Yam has distinguished himself academically through a number of uh, visiting professorships at Beijing University, Renmin University in China, uh, the University of Brighton in UK, Griffith University in Australia, and as a visiting researcher in Hitosubashi University and Tsukuba University in Japan. Professor Yam is a graduate of Korea University, where he received both his BA and MA degrees. He is also an alumnus of Stanford University in the USA, where he received his PhD uh, in political science. Professor Chae Ho Yam began his term as Korea University's uh, 19th president, uh, in March last year. And now I call upon Professor Jae Ho Yam, President of Korea University and founder of the consortium to officially open uh, the ceremony, opening ceremony of the uh, consortium. Uh, let's give him a, a big round of applause. Uh, fellow University President, ambassadors, professors, faculty, and students. It is a great pleasure for me to officially open the first conference of the East Asia Nordic Benelux University Consortium under the theme of unique potentials, great synergies. I'm pleased to know that it has generated interest among top universities in Asia and Europe, and that we all share an eagerness to learn from each other and work collectively to discern the value that we can generate in gathering in this way. I very much appreciate the presence of Dr. Jun Sik Lee, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education of the Republic of Korea at this event. Uh, as you know, he is a really, really busy person and it is a good honor and prestige to have him in this conference. The direction of Ministry of Education provides to the higher education sector in Korea is pivotal both for publicly funded institutions and also for private, private universities such as Korea University. 
In addition, I want to express my personal gratitude to Professor Yuka Kola, uh, the rector of the University of Helsinki, Finland, for his willingness to be the keynote speaker today. Given his extensive background in university administration, academics, and participation on a number of EU uh, projects, I believe he is an ideal speaker to assist in launching the ENUC. Having personally taken the initiative to found this consortium myself, I must admit that the idea was not entirely conceived in isolation. In fact, the impulse to create the consortium arose as the result of discussions among my Korea University colleagues after a visit I made to North, Northern Europe last fall. During my visit, I was greatly impressed by the desire of universities in the Nordic Benelux region to engage with Asian universities, to know more about what is happening in Asia and discover opportunities that may exist for synergies in the areas of university administration, educational delivery, and research promotion, among others. Considering the fact that we are all heirs to an historical legacy that has looked to education as a means of recovery after the devastation of conflict and war, and the immense efforts that our countries have made over the past 60 years towards national development. We all seem to share one commonality, the fostering of human capital as a key to economic, political, and social development. I believe that by bringing, bringing together university representatives from the East Asian and Nordic Benelux regions with a shared understanding the social and economic viability are increasingly dependent on international connectivity, that this forum will be an important place to harness the shared intellectual capital of East Asia and Europe. Examples of where we might make important contributions are found in our two key areas of activity, education and research. As educators, we have a shared responsibility to ensure that next generation of academic, political, social, business leaders are adequately and competitively prepared to cope with current and future needs of a globalized economy. For this reason, I believe that the higher education systems in Asia, in particular China, Japan, and Korea, need an innovative educational system to nurture individuality, to unleash latent critical thinking and creativity. It is my vision to foster what I have called pioneering intellectuals, that is individuals with the ability to solve problems creatively by applying tacit knowledge. We need to focus on developing new educational models and delivery systems based on academic convergence and interdisciplinary collaboration. As researchers, we have the even more challenging task of communicating accurate knowledge from within our academic fields so that responsible public policy decisions are based on rational argumentation, sound science, and a view to the common good. In this regard, I would like to mention the work Korea University is currently doing in partnership with the Korean government agencies to develop KU Magic, that is Korea University Medical Applied R&D Global Initiative Center. KU Magic, yesterday the welcoming uh, dinner uh, our colleague mentioned that from the European view, it is a very interesting subject that we can yeah, cooperate. KU Magic entails the creation of a bio valley adjacent to this campus for the purpose of establishing an international collaborative network of universities and research institutes. 
probably you may heard about uh, KIST, Korea Institute of Science and Technology, that is the major Korean research laboratory started 50 years ago. And that is just adjacent to Korea University, this campus. So we will cooperate together. Can you make promises to yield significant positive innovations in the biomedical research fields of infectious diseases, medical devices, smart aging, precision treatment, big data, among other areas? Can you magic will assist in promoting the biomedical sector in Korea to foster the health and well-being of Korean people while establishing an important and sustainable new economic driver. And so, as you can see, North Korea has a strong interest in establishing international links to assist us in moving forward with the ambitious plans I have just mentioned. In a similar way, I invite my fellow university presidents to utilize the opportunities for dialogue provided by the ENUC to share your university's vision, strategies, and development plans, to see where commonalities exist and how we might combine our efforts and learn from our success and failures. To the professors and researchers here today, I likewise hope that during the concurrent sessions, you will highlight what you are doing in your research fields to uncover opportunities for cooperation and collaboration that might, might exist between your fellow colleagues from Europe and East Asia. I believe by bringing together this very unique group of university representatives through the ENUC, we have the potential to make a positive impact in a variety of areas, from educational reform and development to strengthening research cooperation and promotion. Indeed, each of our institutions holds unique potentials. And so let us now begin the task of coming together to create great synergies. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Yam. And now, uh, before I invite Minister Lee jun -shik, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education of Korea to the stage, I'd like to share with you some biographical information about him. Prior to taking office as Deputy Prime Minister in January this year, he held a number of uh, academic and administrative positions at Seoul National University, ranging from Professor to Dean of Research Affairs from uh, 2011 to 2012, and Executive Vice President uh, from 2012 to 2014. In addition, Minister Lee had served as Auditor of the Korean Federation of Science and Technology Societies from 2013 to uh, 16. He has held a number of government appointments, including most recently chairman of the Special Committee on College of uh, Engineering Innovation, National Science and Technology Council, and the subcommittee chairman of the Presidential Advisory Council on Science and Technology, both from uh, 2014 to 16. Most recently, he is also uh, the director of the Gwangju Institute of Science and Technology. Minister Lee is a graduate of Seoul National University University, where he did both his undergraduate and a master's degrees in mechanical engineering, and he holds a PhD in engineering, uh, mechanical engineering, from the University of California, Berkeley. Please join me now in welcoming to the stage Minister Lee jun -shik. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, honorable rectors and presidents, and uh, distinguished guests. I'm very delighted to have this opportunity to deliver a uh, congratulatory remarks on the opening of East Asia Nordic uh, Benelux University uh, Consortium Conference. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank President Che ho -yong of Korea University for, uh, uh, for the honorable uh, invitation 
to this wonderful event. Uh, let me also express my uh, sincere gratitude to Rector Yuka Kola of the University of Helsinki, Rector Risko Torps of uh, KU Leuven in Belgium, uh, President Wei Liu of Renmin University, and the rest of participants from the East Asian uh, and Nordic Benelux universities for traveling all the way to Seoul to join us today. Thanks to your uh, presence, I have no doubt that uh, this conference will not only uh, help bridge the geographic uh, distance that separates us, but also identify the uh, common uh, challenges we are facing, which will ultimately lead to a greater uh, growth. Korea is the only uh, country in the world which transformed itself from aid recipient to aid donor in a relatively short period. We believe that higher education played a key role in the rapid industrialization and economic growth. So far, uh, we have been very successful as a fast follower, but now we are facing a great barrier we have to break through to become a uh, first mover. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is now absolutely essential to equip our uh, new generation with emerging knowledge and problem-solving problem ability to help them fully live up to their uh, potential, which is crucial not only for achieving uh, national development, but also for the sustainable development of humanity as a whole. The recent match between Arpago and Lisedo which was held in Seoul uh, about a month ago, uh, clearly showed the, the advent of new, new age where human and artificial intelligence coexist. We are already in the first industrial revolution where the growth is, growth is driven by creative ideas and discontinuous innovations. A recent paper uh, published by 2016 World Economic Forum uh, predicts that our next five years, due to the uh, invention of innovative uh, technologies such as robotics and uh, artificial intelligence, five million jobs would be lost and 65% uh, of primary school students would uh, have jobs that do not even exist now. In the face of such drastic changes, the role of university in fostering creative talent is more important than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, currently the Korean government drives a policy to strengthen up the linkage between education and the labor market in response to rapid social and economic changes ahead of us. I would, like also, I would also like to uh, point out that Korea faces a major uh, demographic change due to, due to a severe decrease in birth rate. In the face of this challenge, we expect that university enrollment size should be reduced by 160,000 students until 2023. In order to overcome such problems, Korean government encourages universities through a financial uh, support program to revamp their curricula to meet the future uh, social demand, as well as to downsize the body of, by restructuring their faculty systems. Ladies and gentlemen, in this new age, universities should be willing to embrace globalization, which begins with promoting student exchanges as well as collaboration in research. 
University should now focus on advancing the quality of exchange through dynamic networking rather than just aiming for increasing the number of exchanging students. I'm confident that today's conference will build up the, uh, the cornerstone for a much closer uh, friendship and partnership between Nordic uh, Benelux universities and East, East Asian universities to share their outstanding education and research ex experiences. I have no doubt that our strong partnership will lead to a more active student exchange and cooperation for our constructive uh, future. <clears throat> While hoping that this conference will lead to fruitful outcomes, let me also wish you the very uh, best luck in all your future endeavors. Please have a present stay uh, here in Seoul and enjoy uh, our Korean uh, traditional food and culture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Lee, and let's uh, particularly thank him for having this uh, out of his busy schedule, giving the congratulatory remarks. Now I'd like to draw your attention to our keynote speaker for the opening ceremony, uh, Professor Yuka Kola, uh, the rector of the University of Helsinki, Finland. And Rector Kola began his term as rector at the University of Helsinki uh, in August uh, 2013. And his vision for the development of the University of Helsinki includes the promotion of internationalization by attracting an, inc an increasing number of international students and researchers. Before assuming the position of rectorship, Professor Kola was the vice rector of academic affairs as well as a professor of agricultural policy. He also served as dean of the Faculty of Agriculture and Forestry from 2004 to 9 and head of the Department of Economics and Management from 2001 to 3. Uh, Professor Kola has led several EU projects on economic policy and has contributed uh, to the public debate on international economics and trade policy. Professor Kola received his PhD degree in agriculture and forestry sciences from the University of Helsinki in 1991. It is now my great pleasure to invite uh, Professor Kola to the stage uh, and he's giving his keynote speech. Thank you very much. President Yeung, maybe I should have asked the Deputy Minister, but he left, so, but it was nice to listen to your speeches here, and I will build on that. But then, also, all presidents, rectors, professors, the other audience, it's nice to be here, and it's nice to see so many of you here. I may start, because I know that the Celebration is tomorrow, but then in any case, I would like to congratulate already now to Korea University for the 111th anniversary, and it's celebrated this year and many ways, but also then tomorrow we have a special session. Then I would like to specially thank President Yom for inviting us here, for initiating this idea of further collaboration and really that kind of international, global collaboration between countries that have had already some cooperation in education research side, but that could be improved and increased. And that's why we are here. When we have this three number one, so the 111th anniversary of the Korea University, I thought that I may speak about three I's, three letters I. And they are investment, international, and impact. And to some extent, I said that I will build on the previous speeches by minister and president, but then bringing maybe some more 
concrete elements to there. But we all know that investment in education at all levels is the most important act any nation, any organization, any individual can do. Whether it's a question of the national education, whether it's really a question of each individual education, that are these things in a proper manner dealt with. When we invest in education at all levels, when we invest in research, higher education, often time on social interaction and this innovation side at the university level, then we are creating the better future. So it's an investment in future success of all of us. We also know that the investment in education and research is that kind of long-term decision. It cannot be that we make investment once and then we sort of forget the thing I think and hope that that will develop by itself. It won't. It requires continuous investment, long lasting decisions to maintain it. Of course, sometimes we may receive instant profits or returns by investments or some inputs like well, if there are some people who know football and, or soccer, whatever we use that, if you bet on Leicester City last autumn, you care the Premier League, now you have maybe 5,000 times the return of that, whatever was your amount of money. But that was very risky investment. Education is not a risky investment. It's that kind of investment we need. And we are not looking for instant impacts or returns. We are looking for long term and we are really investing in our future. Here we know that like Korea University or Yonsei University, they are private universities. Then there are Seoul National University, there's a public university here in Korea. Then there are different examples all over the world, whether it's private, whether it's public, whether it's uh, like a, a state level like the United States and many other countries too. So again, there may be different objectives for those investments, but always it is investment in the future. And then how we attract that kind of investment, whether it comes from the private sector, or public sector, or something like even uh, semi-public, semi-private. These are the things that we have to be quite skillful at the universities, that we are attractive, but at the same time, we are maintaining our autonomy, how we make our research, how we create and plan our education in order to keep that kind of objectivity, neutrality and autonomy there. And these are actually some of the cornerstones how that type of investment becomes a long-term investment and it brings the long-term impacts and benefits that we are doing. It can be private funding, it can be public funding, but then we have to know how to do it. And there are different forms to do it. Then, often when we are looking for this, another I, impact, uh, often at the universities we may focus more on the research side, and that's quite okay. It's good to see the research as that kind of major impact uh, originating factor. But then let's not forget the education side. Of course, education means that then we can actually also well, educate the best researchers, whether they come from our own universities or the other universities worldwide. But then the education has actually that kind of short-term impact too. Well, Almost every day or at least every year, there are thousands of young people who graduate from our universities here in East Asia, in Europe, in the United States, in Africa, all over the places. These people, when they go, these young people, to work, 
whether they can stay working at our universities too as researchers, some other positions, but usually, and more, most of them, they go out of the university to work in the labor market. They are the people who are making the future. And how we educate them, actually we shouldn't educate them just to adapt to the working life, just to be there following and continuing the same ways to do, whether it's a private sector or whether it's a public sector, not just doing the same as there has been for decades. They have to be change agents. They have to go to working life to make changes to the better direction. And that's something we have to provide them during their education, whether it's a bachelor level, master level, doctoral level. But yes, we have to give them idea how to develop our own societies, how to develop international society to the better direction. And that's quite a challenge. But I repeat, let's not forget this challenge. And this is the true impact, at least every year, when these young people graduate from our universities. Then the research side, I guess it's uh, easier for us to understand that that's really, there may be huge new ideas, innovations, and how they change the world. But we also know there that it may take 20 years to have the true impact. Uh, do we then believe, do we have that patience to wait for the good results? And that sometimes seems to be in today's life that the, the expectation is to get the great results tomorrow, maybe even today, not waiting for the next week or next month. Well, I am um, exaggeration in this way, but still, that is, we have to be quite good in explaining how we do the best quality research to have true impact. It takes time, but what it also takes Impact often takes these ideas that we collaborate. So there is this impact in interaction. And actually in this connection I may just show here, we have a new strategy for the University of Helsinki for the period of 2017-2020. And this is the vision here is, or even more, almost the mission is, global impact in interaction. And for the University of Helsinki, they are quite big words, global impact in interaction. But yes, that's what the universities at the higher level should be aiming at. How impactful you can be, there are many reasons. Actually, there are nice pictures on the other side too, and the strategy. But then, how impactful you are going to be, it requires cooperation. In today's world of the universities, especially those higher education institutions that are looking for, the, let's say, higher places in rankings, we can have different opinions on the university rankings or some other measurements, how we are compared with each other. But then maybe we have gone a little bit too far on the competition side. We should see more this collaboration side. And actually the ideas that like we here now, East Asia universities, Nordic, Benelux countries, universities, when we can find good ways to collaborate and cooperate, then we don't have to compete with each other. But yes, there are still many universities and many countries we can compete with, not against, but with. And that's the difference. Well, actually, you can see many articles already written, very prestigious, academics and also other people who are saying it and at least analyzing it that way that if you go too far in this competition you start hurting these ideas like impact innovation and then you are pretty much competing with your resources but they are the same resources we are competing with the most talented young people and recruiting them to our universities we are recruiting the best researchers but still are we doing the same field? Should we see actually the possibilities to do it together and actually have more collaboration, 
both in education and research side, because that's helping many of us at the same time and still putting together our sometimes scarce resources. I have to say here that, especially in Finland, when there have been some cuts in the government budget and also cuts aimed at universities and education side, we have to see it more and more carefully where we invest. And then you are looking most often more collaboration, not just competition, because then you can pool your resources and have a bigger impact. Then on this research side, I hope that today, when we are thinking how we can create something out of this new collaboration with our East Asian, Nordic and Benelux countries, universities, is that these uh, scientific sessions this today, this afternoon, something is going to really come out of those sessions. Because it's a good way to start it that way, that it's really bottom-up process. Our researchers, professors are there talking about what they are doing and then realizing what the other people, professors, researchers are doing in these other universities. We know it to some extent. We have had some collaboration between our uh, 12 universities who are represented here, but there's, like the title says, there are really huge potentials what we can reach when we, actually, when we learn to know each other better. These are sometimes quite simple things. When we enter into dialogue, better the dialogue, and maybe it's with many, many partners already, then we can see what are our possibilities. Actually, it was already defined here that when the invitation, kind of invitation came for us to join this uh, seminar here, that there were also this invitation that we could get some our top scientists uh, here too, and in certain areas like this informatics, computer science, and information systems. Then there was biomedical life sciences and welfare systems and welfare policies and social change. These are already sort of the focus areas. Okay, they are quite broad, but like today, our researchers, professors are talking on these topics, but for the future, for our collaborators, it is really that identifying certain focus areas in research or and in education side, and then creating something there, starting with small steps. We don't have to immediately look at the very grandiose major steps, but having really the idea that, okay, now we are here, we can already start something, we who are here, and then we can join our partners, colleagues at our universities, and doing it that way. Small, but concrete steps. And often it is really bottom-up process. But we can help it. Um, Top-down sounds sometimes like too much it is, but then it's also, we presidents, we can see that if we really know and then sort of expect these impacts in the long, long run, then we can have some also, let's say, investments in this collaboration, interaction, in order to bring this impact. More impacts, more innovations. Also, we should utilize better the modern techniques or methods and modern ways of education. So it's not only the research side, but uh, what about if we create like this massive open online courses or let's say internet education courses there together creating something in really international way. Also good quality education, but then really having this international content in a natural way there, not trying to create. Well, in Europe, we are creating more, and also here in Asia, more English taught courses and often do it by ourselves. Maybe there's a chance for more collaboration and not only the old way, but the new ways, which are already widely used. So this is something that we should concentrate and see what can we do. Maybe also joint decrease, double decrease, that is the way that not just compete, but doing it actually together. That would be one way. Again, it requires that we see that it's something we want to do and we see the ways how to do. So not be 
stuck in some bureaucracy or administrative issues, but seeing it as a major goal for our universities to improve our collaboration. A little bit back to impact and research. It was several times mentioned that today we, we cannot stay in our narrow silos of our special expertise. We have to have the special expertise, but then we have to start sharing it. And then interdisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity, or transdisciplinarity, these are different meaning sometimes same things, but sometimes meaning very different ways. We have to be there all the time, seeing that how we can join some different areas, science and our research and our education, to really bring something new. Well, we can work with the narrow areas and have a gradual improvements, and all that is needed too. But having sometimes the major innovations in research and also how it can be applied, then we have to be more on the borderlines, not there in our own silos. And again, when we have these countries, 12 universities, we can easily find those borderlines, how we combine our own expertise with people from also other universities, other countries, and then creating something that we even haven't thought earlier. And these are the true impacts of research and higher education. We all know it, but let's make it more concrete between our universities, and then having these concrete small steps, which may lead to very big steps there. And when people come together, at least we are creating networks. And that's already quite important concrete step that we learn to know each other, like I was saying. And after this, today, Tomorrow, when we are together here, when we learn to know each other, well, it is already one concrete established, let's say, instrument, how in the future, next days, next weeks, next years, we can have very good results, impacts, and innovation. And that's why we are here. So, with your three one number ones, we can put these three letters I. Actually, I was talking more than three letters of I. If you have investment, international interaction, impact and innovation, then there's also interdisciplinarity and some other words starting with I. But it's not important what is the first letter. It is what's the contents. And we are creating it today and tomorrow and in the future days between us. We have to see it. Like follow it and see that there will be these results. Thank you very much, President Young, inviting us here. It's our pleasure. Uh, now let's make results and impacts together. Thank you very much.